once again folks and welcome to 81632bit i'm your host learn the drop now last time on the show we looked at the sega home versions of virtua racing specifically the mega drive and 32x conversions well that got me thinking the sega virtua processor on the mega drive wasn't the only attempt to get that higher end polygon rendering going on the fairly underpowered 16 bit systems of the time. Because, of course, Nintendo had their Super FX chip. So I thought to myself, why not compare the two? So that's what I'm doing today. We're going to look at the SVP from Sega and the Super FX chip from Nintendo. Now, I'm not going to pretend this is going to be super in-depth or incredibly groundbreaking, but I just want to have a look at the two processors and see how they handled things differently and what they did for their respective machines. So, let's get to it. Now, in the early 1990s, the only way you could experience high-end 3D graphics as a gamer was to head down to your local arcade and play on a machine such as Virtua Racing from Sega itself. Of course, the kind of graphics that were generated by these machines were far beyond what was capable of the 16-bit consoles of the era, but that didn't stop Sega and Nintendo looking at it, these games and thinking, we can do these in the home. So, let's begin with Super Nintendo's Super FX chip. Now, the Super FX chip was a 21.4 MHz RISC coprocessor developed by Argonaut Software. This used an internal clock divider, however, which dropped the speed down to just over 10 MHz during practical usage. Now, it was designed by Argonaut Software for Nintendo, and they did develop the early games for it, such as Star Fox or Star Wing, depending on where you lived in the world. Now, the Super FX chip itself allowed various advanced 2D sprite effects and some 3D polygon rendering. It was not, however, a polygon renderer like a modern GPU. It used advanced mathematical algorithms to allow programs to display polygons at what was a reasonable frame rate for the time, although a relatively low uh, horizontal resolution of just 192 lines. This does go some way to explaining as to why many Super FX games had very large borders around the screen. Now, according to Nintendo, the Super FX could generate 76,500 polygons a second, although I've never actually seen any verification of this, it's very clear to me that the number of polygons actually being rendered is significantly lower. Now, the Super FX chip was later superseded by a Super FX 2 chip, which is probably most notable for being used in sprite case games such as Yoshi's World. Now, the Sega Virtua Processor was a 23.01 MHz Samsung SSP1601 DSP which ran at the full 23 MHz speed. It was taken by Sega and used to create games such as Virtua Racing on the Mega Drive and Genesis. Now, despite plans for other games rumoured to include Virtua Fighter, only Virtua Racing was ever released. Now, unlike the Super FX, the SVP was designed from the ground up to allow advanced 3D polygon rendering. This was built for this from the off. As such, it used a double buffered 320 by 192 resolution, again heavily bordered much like the SNES, but the SVP is known to have rendered 9,000 polygons a second in Virtua Racing and the visual difference is noticeable. Officially, the processor could manage up to 20,000 flat shaded polygons per second, but of course, we never got to see this in action. Now, as a direct comparison, the SVP was a much faster chip. It managed around about 15 to 20 ish frames per second compared to the Super FX, which hovered somewhere around the 10 to 12 frames per second mark, apparently. Now, the SVP was helped by the fact that the Mega Drive's Motorola 6800 processor as well was faster than Nintendo's own custom chip in the SNES. 
however they are both remarkable technical achievements and it shows you just how creative companies could be with boosting the hardware available to produce games which at the start of the life cycles were deemed impossible. So, which was the better chip? Was it the SuperFX chip or the SVP? Well, for me, the SVP clearly handled more polygons at a higher rate than the SuperFX chip, but realistically, they were both good, especially given the constraints of the systems they were being used on at the time. Now, if you have any thoughts on this, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video, and I will see you next time on the next episode of 8.16.32-bit.